What is up guys? Welcome to MST.TV. In today's episode, we are going to take a look at Dragon Maids. So this is a new archetype that will be coming to the TCG in just under two weeks with the new set Mystic Fighters. This archetype is almost definitely going to be extremely popular, even if it isn't the most competitive, being an archetype that's featuring girls on the cards and everything. Therefore, I think it's important to at least have an idea of what the cards do and what the deck is trying to accomplish. So this video can either be an introduction to you guys who want to try and learn how to play the deck and need someone to go over the cards with you, or give you some surface knowledge if you just want to know what the cards do so that you can play around them. So please guys, if you like the video, please be sure to leave a thumbs up and of course make sure that you guys are subscribed. And if you guys want to see videos like this in the future, maybe for the generators or for Mathmex, the other two archetypes in the set, let me know down in the comments section below. Let's jump right into it. So in my mind, I kind of think of Dragon Maids as being a lot like Cosmo, right? So with Cosmo, we had the pilots, which were the smaller monsters, and the ships, which were the bigger monsters, and we could tag the smaller pilots into the bigger ships. Dragon Maids are kind of similar in that there are two halves to the monster lineup, the human form and then the dragon form where the human forms can tag into the dragon forms and then vice versa. So all the human forms have effects that activate on summon, whereas the dragon forms have effects that activate in the hand by discarding them. You can then use the effects of the human forms to tag into the dragon forms, summoning the dragons out of the hand or graveyard by returning the human form to your hand at the start of the battle phase. Then at the end of the battle phase, you have the option of bouncing the dragon form to your hand to summon that human form, but only from your hand again. Now, there are a couple of important things to note here. One is that you can do this during either battle phase, so including your opponents. However, if you're tagging the human form into the dragon form, that has to be done at the start of the battle phase. And if you're tagging the dragon form into a human form, that has to be done at the end of the battle phase, right? You can't do it the other way around. The other important thing to keep in mind is that not all human forms can tag into all the dragon forms. So the level 3 human forms can only tag into the level 8 dragon forms, whereas the level 2 humans can only tag into the level 7 dragons. Now this is a very big restriction, unfortunately. Um, they aren't restricted by attribute, so we could have the level 3 fire human form tag into the level 8 wind dragon form. However, you do have to keep in mind what levels you have access to when you decide what cards you want to prioritize getting into your hand or into your graveyard. Also, if you're playing against this deck, you want to make sure that your opponent is only tagging into the appropriate cards that they're allowed to tag into. Anyways, let's get into the cards themselves. So first we're gonna go over the human forms now. All of the humans have effects where on the field you can return them to the hand at the start of the battle phase to summon a dragon from your hand or graveyard, and they all have on summon effects as well. So first up, let's go over the level three dragon maids. The first one, Kitchen, lets you search for a dragon maid monster and then discard a dragon maid monster. This card is very flexible because you can search for either a human or dragon form if you have, say, multiple dragons in your hand, you can search for a human form and then discard the dragon to the graveyard, and then you can bounce the kitchen to summon that dragon back, and it's basically really, really free. Or you can get like a human form into the graveyard, which can then be revived after using one of the many revival cards that Dragon Maids have access to. And the other level 3 Dragon Maid is Parlor, which allows you to send a Dragon Maid card from your deck to the graveyard. Of course, the card you dump depends on what cards you have access to in your hand and graveyard. You can dump a dragon monster in order to tag into it. Uh, you can dump a human form if you want to revive something. Or you can even dump the fusion spell because it can be added back to your hand after. Now, in my opinion, these cards are both ones that you're going to want to run three copies of as they're really key cards for the archetype that allow the dex engine to get going. And on the other hand, we have the level 2 Dragon Maids, which are both quite good as well. Nurse allows you to summon a level 4 or lower Dragon Maid monster from your graveyard, which is really, really helpful if you had any of your humans destroyed or they've been sent there. This is doubly important because it means that during the battle phase, you now have two human forms that you can bounce to your hand to summon the dragon forms with. That is a lot of advantage being generated off of one card. Now, this card isn't very useful like turn one, but most turns after that, this card should be a really, really key card that you're using to help generate card advantage and field presence. The last human form that we have is Laundry, which mills three cards from your deck to the graveyard on summon. 
This one is potentially really, really useful because theoretically you could mill multiple dragons at once that are free for you to revive. However, you aren't guaranteed to hit anything, right? It probably feels pretty bad if you mill like your non-dragon made cards, for example. Um, the other thing that makes this risky is you might not hit the right level of dragons that you want to take advantage of. Whereas if you use parlor or kitchen, you're guaranteed to get that dragon in the graveyard that you can then bounce. So while this card is still useful and it can help the deck to get going in a tight situation, it's probably not the one that I'm going to want to prioritize using my normal summon on. So now let's get on to the dragon forms. All of the dragons have a first effect that prevents them from being destroyed by card effects while you control a fusion monster. This is because the dragon maids actually have a fusion boss monster, which we're going to get into later. Uh, this is kind of cute because it means that they'll have to try to either destroy the fusion first or use some other sort of removal to get rid of everything. Also, they all have effects that let you return them to the hand to summon the human form from your hand at the end of the battle phase. And then finally, their unique effects that all activate um, are all effects that require them to be discarded. So they activate in the hand. We should remember that because the human forms can summon from either the hand or the graveyard in order to maximize our value, we should be trying to use the dragon form in hand effect first, get it into the graveyard and then summon it out from there, unless we're really afraid of something like DD Crow. So we're going to go over the level 8 dragons first. Tink Heck is the fire one. Um, its discard effect is a quick effect where you can discard it to boost a dragon made monster by 2000 attack points. This can be used in the damage step if you want, however you can also discard it to pump up a dragon maid and then bounce another one for it to bring it onto the field and push for quite a bit of damage. Um, the other level 8 is Lorepar and that's the wind one. Unfortunately its effect isn't a quick effect, but you can discard it to negate the effect of a face up monster on the field. Obviously this is really useful going second even though it is a bit situational. The card would be insane if it was a quick effect, but as is it's kind of like it's okay it has some uses in the meta. These cards are important though, also because we want to play 3 of Kitchen and 3 of Parlor. Those are the level 3 human forms, and these are the cards that they can tag into. This allows you to use the human forms again and generate card advantage quickly. So you're probably going to want to play like around 2 copies of each of these, just so that you have forms for Kitchen and Parlor to tag into. So on to the other dragon forms, this time the level 7 ones. Now I believe that Ernest is one of the most important cards in the deck. As, as a quick effect, you can discard it to special summon a level 4 or lower dragon made monster from your hand. Now, as a quick effect, you can do this during your opponent's end phase, get that monster's effect, then during your turn, bounce it and then summon it again to get the effect an additional time. Now, the dragon made deck needs to be able to put multiple human monsters onto the field and then bounce them for the dragon forms. That's how the deck generates advantage, that's how the deck gets field presence. But if you only have like your one normal summon available, you're only getting that effect once per turn. So between cards like Ernest, Nurse, and the spell card, that's potentially like additional human forms you can get onto the field, which you can then bounce to get the dragon forms out of the graveyard. So Ernest plays a really big role in fixing the deck's problem of not being able to get bodies out on the field. So even though it's an inherent neg one, I still think that it's a very key card in the Dragon Maid deck and should be played at three. Now the other level 7 in the deck is called Nudyarl, uh, which allows you to shuffle a monster from either player's graveyard into the deck when you discard it. It is unfortunately not a quick effect. Um, this effect is like, okay, it's very situationally useful against certain decks. Like I could see if Orcus doesn't have the field spell up, how it's good against them. Or you can put something back in the Salamangrate matchup, like a Spinny or a Jack Jaguar or something like that. So yeah, not like a super useful effect, but the positive right is that it's easy to get into the graveyard. You just discard it, you shuffle anything back, so it's free value because you're just going to bring it back onto the field after. Personally, I would only be playing one to two copies of Nudyarl, depending on your lineup of your lower level Dragon Maid monsters. Alright, onto the boss monsters, so for Dragon Maids, we just have a fusion monster, we don't have any link monsters, so we're not super dependent on the extra deck or anything. But we have House Dragon Maid. She is a fusion monster that requires one Dragon Maid monster and one Dragon type monster. You're probably using two Dragon Maid monsters to make this card. There is a themed fusion spell, so you don't have to play polymerization. Anyways, this card does have a couple of effects. The first is that when you bounce your own dragon from your field to the hand, you get to destroy a monster on your opponent's field each time. Now this effect isn't once per turn or anything, so if you bounce multiple monsters, you get to destroy multiple monsters on your opponent's board. 
This is pretty cool. Unfortunately, in the current meta, we have cards like Thunder Dragon, Colossus, and Dingursu in the game. So it's not the most useful right now. It can be useful against some decks, like maybe against like Marincess or something. Its other effect allows you to summon a Dragon Maid from your hand or graveyard that is one level away from a Dragon Maid monster that you control. So if you have a level two on the field, you can bring out a level three and proc its effect. Or if you have a level eight, you can bring out a level seven. And this effect is during either player's standby phase. So you can do it immediately after your turn. It goes to your opponent's turn. They go to standby phase. You use this card's effect. It's all good. This effect is very useful, especially if you have another human form on the field, since it allows you to proc the effect of the human form during your opponent's turn as well. Now, of course, don't forget that while this card is on the field, your dragon form monsters also cannot be destroyed by card effects. Overall, I do think this card is very, very good. It helps to make the game a lot easier for dragon maids, allowing you to put monsters onto the board more easily and providing some form of disruption, which the deck definitely lacks. Also, it's important to note that because you typically want to tag your humans and dragons in and out, you generally don't want to consolidate your resources and link into anything really, really big. So this is definitely a card that I would be running three copies of as the one extra deck monster that you should be bringing out every single game. Okay, so we're onto the spells and traps now. Now, Dragon Maid Hospitality is basically like the best card in the deck, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be the card that is short printed in the set, as it is a three of for sure. It allows you to special summon a Dragon Maid from your hand or graveyard, and then dump a Dragon Maid from your deck to the graveyard that has the same attribute, but different level from the one that you summoned. Now this card is amazing because one, it lets you get a monster onto the board to proc its effect, but two, it also even loads up the graveyard with a dragon as well, so that you can bounce the human, summon the dragon, and then use its effect again the following turn. This is definitely a key card for the deck, as the deck can be inconsistent if you draw the wrong combination of cards, and this just kind of helps to get the deck going. Now, the other spell that we have coming in Mystic Fighters is the fusion spell called Dragon Maid Changeover. It is basically just a polymerization, allowing you to fuse from your field or hand to make house Dragon Maid. Technically, you can summon five-headed dragon with this please don't do that um anyways it does have the ability to add itself from the graveyard to your hand if you simply bounce a dragon maid from the field to your hand which is kind of cool technically this means that you can add it back right after it's used now because of this you're probably not going to need to run more than one or two copies it is searchable with the trap card which we're going to talk about next or you can dump it with parlor to add it back to your hand right after um so yeah it's slightly more useful than polymerization and it's a dragon maid card. And the last card we have here is the trap card, Dragon Maid Downtime. Now, this is the search card for Dragon Maid, so it's kind of unfortunate that it is a trap. However, it is a very good one. It allows you to bounce your Dragon Maid monster in order to gain other effects. So one of those is to search for any Dragon Maid card in the archetype, which is honestly incredible because it allows you to fetch a card like Hospitality. Um, also remember that this is a continuous trap, so if your opponent targets a dragon maid you control with something like mind control, you can chain the trap to bounce that monster to your hand and get the search off, so very very useful. Um, its other effect allows you to bounce an opponent's back row, which might be situationally useful. You're probably not using that effect as much as you are using the first effect. Like, if your opponent sets only one back row, you can bounce it during their end phase and then hopefully OTK them the following turn, so it does have some use, I guess. Uh, but yeah, this card is a little bit slow, and it's not searchable itself. However, when you do see the card, it really does help get the deck going quite a bit. In my opinion, this is a card that you should be playing three of because you want to have access to it and see it every single game. Alright guys, that is it for this video. So I wanted to discuss some cards other than Dragon Maid cards that might be useful in the archetype, but honestly I feel like there aren't too many being played. So for extra deck monsters, there's nothing that we really want to consolidate multiple Dragon Maids into. I'd rather have, right, like the house Dragon Maid in the extra monster zone, and then a bunch of different forms that I can tag in and out. If anything, I think that the Heretic Seal of Heavenly Spheres is an important card, and I'd probably be playing two of it in this deck because it provides some of that much needed disruption for during your opponent's turn. It only requires two monsters to make, and when it leaves the field, you can bring out a Dragon Maid out of the deck and then proc its effect. 
Now, aside from that, most of the main deck options are going to be Dragon Maid cards. I think that something like Return of the Dragon Lords is something that should be considered, as it allows you to bring back a Dragon Maid if you get disrupted, as well as allow you to protect House Dragon Maid from destruction by banishing it from the graveyard. Of course, then you're probably going to be playing your usual lineup of hand traps like Ash Blossom, Nibiru, or Phantasme. One final thing to note here is that I did see an OCG decklist that played the Shadal engine in the side deck as you could dump a Shadal monster and a key Dragon Maid card from your deck to put a Shadal fusion monster on board and then get whatever monster into the graveyard so that you could revive it later. Now I don't know if this is something that's going to see play from the deck moving forward but it's probably something to consider. Also it's going to be the first time ever that the Shadal engine is played without like Construct or Winda and probably the first deck that's ever going to try to utilize Wendigo, but okay. Um, anyways guys, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more videos like this, make sure that you guys hit the subscribe button, and of course let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of the Dragon Maid archetype, and yeah, until next time guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.